from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, and one thing I want to get, because you have uh, such an arc, I want to get to your visuals early on. Uh, there, there, there he is. is. There he is. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so I'm always fascinated with origin stories of the creators behind their creations um, because cartoonists are often a different animal. I think the, the political cartoonist Jack Oman once said, like meeting a cartoonist is a little bit like meeting a weekend weatherman. You know they exist, but meeting them sort of in the, in the real life, it's like, how did you get that job? Or what was, you know? But most cartoonists I know wanted as children to be cartoonists. And they're the ones who actually though had the skill. Did you always want to be a cartoonist? Yeah, I wanted to be a cartoonist yeah. starting probably in, uh, maybe second or third grade. Yeah, what were you reading? I was reading Peanuts, yeah, of, of course. course. Of course. And I was reading, uh, we got two daily newspapers at my house. One came in the morning, one came yeah. in the afternoon. So I read the comics in the Boston Globe in the morning. In the afternoon, I read the comics in the Foster's Daily Democrat. Okay, were you living in New Hampshire in the time? In New or? Hampshire, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And when did you start drawing your creations? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. You know, I mean, I think there's a difference between, you know, copying and drawing. Yeah. So I started copying when I was probably five or six years old. Yeah. And I think I copied for probably a couple of years. Okay. You know, just copying, what I, like I would draw Charlie Brown, I'd draw Snoopy, and I would uh, draw Andy Cap, Fred yeah. Bassett. Sure. You know, all I, these comic I'm strips. Where even if I didn't necessarily like the comics, yeah. I might like the way they looked. Something about the visual. Yeah. You know, it was appealing. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so here you've got the progression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, school performance yeah. right there. Yeah. And, uh, and there. <laughs> yeah. So that's school picture day. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, I always, when I talk to kids, because I do school visits, sure. and I talk to kids, and, and um, I say that Nate is, Nate, is by, Nate is not a bad kid. He is a good kid to which bad things uh, oftentimes happen, yeah. Yeah. like a really disastrous school picture yeah. day like that one. <laughs> did, but, uh, did, were you a good kid to whom bad things happened growing up, or, um, or a bad kid to whom good things happened? No, a, a good kid... Um, and I think in the overall spectrum, I mean, I wanted to be a bad kid. Oh. The bad kids were having all the fun. Sure. The yeah. bad kids, you know, if you acted out in elementary or middle school yeah. and a teacher really screamed at you, you were a legend. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. were a legend. Yeah. And so I always sort of envied those kids, but I was never quite bold enough to really act out in a way that I knew would disappoint my parents. Now, I heard John yeah. Purse never acted out either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he did not. He did not. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's the sort of... So I, I had sort of that envy of, yeah. of the bad kids. Okay. But I, no, I was, I was pretty much a good kid. You were a good kid. And, yeah. and here we have... This right. One's, is this, oh, there we... Can we go back one? I think I clicked too far. Yeah. So there yeah. you get a sense of, of Nate. And, yeah, uh, so that's a Sunday page, and I... Um, it has, it's got like a, like a pratfall in it, yeah. like it's got slapstick in it, which is yeah. one of the things that I love. And it yeah. has uh, something, like I think you can do certain things in comics that you can't do in other media. Yeah. You know, like from one panel to the next, you can imply that like five minutes have gone by yeah. without saying five minutes later. Yeah. yeah. So in this one, you know that a significant amount of time passes from the second to last panel to the last one. Enough yeah. time for Nate to go flying up and get caught in a tree yeah. and have the lifeguard have to, you know, sort of climb up to get him. Yeah. And so, but it's funnier if you don't show all that. Yeah. I think it's yeah. funnier. So. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so here we, we get to see Nate, you know, his... <laughs> is, he's talking about his, his learning style, yeah. which he, which he uh, describes as stop, drop, and roll, which... which uh, yeah. Yeah, I just like that guy. I just thought, stop, drop, and roll, that's, that's a, a phrase that all kids know. Yeah. Yeah. And 
just a staple in my comic strip is Nate sort of experiencing things in different ways yeah. from the way other people do. And yeah. so for him, that's sort of a perfect, you know, that's a phrase that is completely like emblematic of just his, his whole philosophy. <laughs> survival. And his, he, his coping skills. Yeah, his method of survival. <laughs> that could have been. That was the alternate title of the strip, wasn't it? It was stop, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. It could have yeah, been. Yeah. Yeah. So here you were talking about peanuts being an influence yes. here. So here yeah. we see from from your sketchbook. Yeah. So my mother, bless her heart, you know, she. Um, so I had an I got an allowance at the time. Okay. One one dollar a week. Wow. And those peanuts, little paperbacks. Yeah. Cost fifty cents. Yeah. So if I didn't spend my money on anything else, I could buy two of those in a week, and yeah. I'd bring them home, and my mother would immediately write our our name <laughs> and the date in them, like. Probably because she, she did that with everything. I mean, she wrote that on my underwear. I mean, it, you know, like, as if, you know, I was going to leave my underwear lying around somewhere. Yeah. Well, if you stop, drop, and roll, <laughs> then something could happen. Yeah, right, you never know. <laughs> and, and, then, and then once she had, once she had written the name and the date, yeah. then, then the book was mine to sure. do with what I wanted. Yeah. And what I wanted to do a lot of the time was try to draw the characters. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my... Um, I had problem with feet back then. I, had, <laughs> I hadn't mastered that yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's Charlie Brown. He's carrying Snoopy's supper dish out to Snoopy. I love it. Now, you were first syndicated by NEA, in, which was a division of United. And of course, uh, Charles Sparky Schultz basically helped. It. United was the house that he helped build. Did Absolutely. You, did you ever get a chance to meet Sparky? I met him, yeah. I actually, our first contact was we spoke on the phone okay. because... Back then, the comics editor was a woman named Sarah Gillespie, mm -hmm. and when you were a new cartoonist, sometimes, not always uh, from what I understand, but sometimes she would show the work of new cartoonist to Sparky. Yes. And so she showed my strip to Sparky, and then she said, um, she said you might be getting a call Wow. From Sparky. Wow. And I said, wow. And so, and then some time went by. Yeah. And then one day, my wife and I were still living in Brooklyn, and the phone rang. My wife answered the phone. I was, I remember I was lying on the couch in the living room, and my wife came in and she said, Charles Schultz is on the phone. Wow. Yeah. And it was like, it was, you know, I was talking to my boyhood hero. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked for like an hour, and then we talked. You know, not often. We weren't like close friends by sure. any means, but we talked once or twice a year. And then I met him in person for the one and only time mm -hmm. in 1996 mm -hmm. at the Rubens, Rubens in New York. Sure. Yeah. And I just I, I attached myself to him and monopolized him as best yeah. I could. Yeah. Because what you know, how often you get a chance to to speak to your your hero? And Did you, just... you ask him how to draw feet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was very helpful there. Yeah. yeah. I met him two years later. I was so busy kissing his feet that I could have <laughs> draw the, the, the uh. lovers. Yeah. That, that, you know, that's amazing. That's something about there is such a fraternity in the comics industry that you find yourself meeting your heroes. And it's a, it's a special yeah, thing. Yeah, there's nothing like it. It's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. So here you have the evolution of you as, as, a, as a cartoonist. <laughs> this was my first original comic strip creation, uh, Super Jimmy. And how, as, how old were you, do you think, when you... Probably 10. Okay. And Did your mom date, date this? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can tell, you know, so, of course, I was a huge comics reader. Yeah. And I loved the funny comics, but I also loved the action ones. Sure. And I loved, I heard Roz mention Mad Magazine. Yeah. So I loved those sort of parodies and satires. So that, my thought was... I create a superhero who combines all the things I love. He's funny, but, but he has superpowers. Yeah. So, you know, he's a, a superhero who's not very bright, basically, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and just makes everything worse. Yeah, I love it. So, and then you have your progression as a, as yeah, a cartoon. Yeah, so, um, so the character on the left, the fella with the blonde hair, uh, his name is Nate. Yeah. And the guy on the right is named Marty. So this this... Submission was the precursor to Big Nate. It was a comic strip called Neighborhood Comics. Yeah, yeah. And it was based, based on my childhood and the neighborhood in New Hampshire where I grew up with a younger brother, me, and the older brother, Nate. Nate is my nickname for my older brother. 
This is a more suave looking meat, a more polished yeah. looking meat. Well, so, um, so I sent this in and they told me, um, you know, with the spiky blonde hair, you know, he looks a little bit like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, you yeah. know, and of course, as a cartoonist, the last thing you want to be told is, you know, you're, you're st you, you know, your character looks too much like another character. Yeah. So I went back to the drawing board and I redesigned Nate in a fairly radical way. Yeah. So I think the next slide might show. And you dodged the lion you had in there too, maybe? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, so there's Nate, the yeah. pudgy guy on the right. Yeah, yeah that's Nate. That's a massive makeover. That was a, a huge makeover. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so parents and um, people of a certain age will back me up on this. During the late 1980s, there was an unfortunate hair trend among young men where it was sort of long on the top and all, like shaved all around the sides of yeah. like a mushroom cap. Yeah. Yeah. And so that I gave Nate hair like that. <laughs> And I made him overweight because I w didn't want him to look like Calvin or anybody yeah. else. Yeah. And then um, I got more feedback um, from the woman who eventually became my editor. And she said, now Nate looks like an overweight middle-aged man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He looks like Peter Griffin up there. Or yeah. Something like so that. So you've gone so. from Calvin to Peter Griffin in, in <laughs> one makeover. So the progression yeah. continues. Yeah. So then I started just... Um, so that's an early... That, that drawing is probably from maybe a year or two before the strip finally got up and running. Okay. And, and the I top one is his dad and not Nate, right? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, he, see, he sees and experiences things in ways, yeah. you know, so his dad has like maybe a tiny pot belly, a slight yeah. pot belly, but Nate yeah. imagines him as being this enormous, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Oompa Loompa Right, type. right. Yeah. And the, even the spikiness evolved, where, where Nate now has those polished yeah. sort of... He's still you know. bald on the sides. Yeah. And, and inevitably, I, I go into school visits, and um, I'm almost always asked about Nate's hair. Yeah. Like, what's up with it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Some, I've been asked, why does Nate have dreadlocks? Sure. I've been asked, why is he bald on the sides? Yeah. I've, I've been asked... Um, you know, were you imitating other partially bald comic strip characters yeah. like Charlie Brown? I was going to say Charlie Brown Sparky just had, why is your child almost completely bald? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I don't quite know why, but yeah, that, that's just the way. I wanted, after they had told me he looks too much like a middle-aged man, I said, well, I got to make him younger. And yeah. spiky sort of wild hair yeah. seemed like yeah. the way to go. Yeah. And I think cartoonists, random acts of baldness is always funny, is <laughs> yeah. always amusing. Exactly. Yeah. So you, again, so, so, yeah. Right. I just, you know, so just, to, so just to contrast, you know, the last drawing and this one were probably separated by, you know, over 20, maybe 20 or 20 some years. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I talk to kids about all the time is, you know, you're never too old to improve. I mean, I could not draw all that well when mm. I started. Mm. You know, even when I got syndicated in the first, my first several years that the strip was out there, I look at those strips now and I really, I kind of cringe. I don't like wow. the way they look. Wow. But I can draw, I can draw well enough now that, you know, I, I can make the strip look the way I want it to yeah. look. Yeah, yeah, enough control. Yeah. Um, you know, and speaking of launching the strip, I know you launched at about the same time as Dilbert. And yeah, he was a little before me. A little before, but, yeah. but Scott Adams talked about, he wanted his strip originally to be very much a, a more uh, home-based, have Dilbert be 80, like 80% 80 in the home and 20% workplace, right. until his reader said, no, here's where the heat is, here's where your funny is. Yeah. Um, you, didn't, you had a different orientation originally with right. your strip. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I thought I was going to do a strip First of all, there were a lot of comic strip families at the time, sort of conventional family units. Yeah. A couple of parents, a couple of kids, you know, like, like Foxtrot, for better or for worse, Calvin and Hobbes, you know. So I said, well, I got to be different. Yeah. So I said, well, Nate will have uh, like a single parent home with the yeah. dad. Yeah. And, uh, and so I thought, well, I can probably write a lot of good gags about this single dad, sort of like a hapless guy, overwhelmed. You know, maybe he'll try to, like, date people, and he'll have these two sort of rambunctious kids. So I thought I was going to do sort of a domestic strip. Yeah. And then, um, 
and then I realized in pretty short order that I wasn't all that interested in that, that yeah. I was interested in school, yeah. like school gags, teachers, yeah. you yeah. know, the stuff that happens in school. Schools are hilarious. <laughs> you know? That's where the funny is. That's where the funny yeah. is. So you launched Stepping Out in 120 and then 135. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, it was the most successful launch they yeah. had had in a long, long time. Yeah. And then it completely went down in flames. Can you talk about how that... Yeah. That, yeah. I can. Yeah. So there was a... Um, so comic strips are sold by a sales staff and they are divided into regions of the country. And the West... Sometimes they're offered bonuses, right? Sometimes they are offered bonuses. Yeah. And so... Uh, United, uh, United Media really wanted to make a splash with Big Nate, and so they offered uh, a bonus for the sales staff, see how many papers you can sell Nate into. And so the West Coast sales rep sold Nate into a lot of papers, yes, but also fabricated a lot of sales. <laughs> <laughs> so that he could collect his bonus. So you have your whole building. Like, I know yeah. when, I, when the same syndicate launched me, you would get, rep, like, this rep they just sold in L.A., and you get these reports back. So you yeah. must have been like, way, I'm going like hotcakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And back then, it all happened by mail. Yeah. So I'm getting these sales receipts yeah. saying, you've just been sold into the Chicago Tribune. Yeah. You've just been sold into the LA Times or whatever. And I was absolutely elated. Yeah. You know, I thought, my ship has come in. Yeah. And then suddenly, and this was all even before the strip started showing up in papers. Yeah. And then I started getting other envelopes. Yeah. And they were slips that were a different color. <laughs> and they were, they were cancellations. Wow. So this, this sales rep who had, who had done this, yeah. he actually died. Yeah. Uh, literally, literally within days of the strip debuting, yeah, and all the like, all the sales that he had made up obviously went away, yeah, and a lot of the sales that were legitimate went away because he wasn't there to follow them up. Sure, wow. So I lost in the first year I was syndicated. I lost, I think, over half my papers. Oh, oh, that's brutal. And my editor had told me like you might lose 10 or 15% of the papers that you get, but that's normal, that's fine. Not 50%. Not 50, yeah, yeah not 50, so. Yeah. But it survived. Did, did you go to the funeral of that West Coast salesman? <laughs> <laughs> I sent a big bouquet. Okay. <laughs> okay, wow. So here we have early Yeah, that's the first Nate. Big Nate uh, daily yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah, it's looking polished already. It's, not, it's, you know, <laughs> Not, not to me. I mean, yeah. I, look, I look at it and I, I mean, visually, in some ways, you can tell he's the same character, but he yeah. looks very different. You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's lankier, yes. he's skinnier, he's it's taller. Good. I was going to say he had the, the more the Bigfoot style of cartooning with yeah. the long legs. Huge and, feet. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so that was the first one. And that, this is another strip from the very, from the very first week when yeah. I, you know... This is sort of indicative of the sort of gag I thought I might do a lot of with yeah. like these family, yeah. these family conversations. Yeah. And, you're and you're still even visually working out the, the size of the balloons and the characters and Yeah, the I'm working it all out. All, all I mean, I knew that I always wanted to do just a four panel strip. Yeah. I love the rhythm of four panels. Yeah. So I've never done a daily that was not four panels. I've yeah. never like changed to three or like I, I just like it. I like yeah. four. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, can we go back to yeah. that last can you one go just back? in a sec? Yeah, they can. Do so it. humbling moment here. So just to, to show it. to show like <laughs> that I. Oh yeah, I like that gag too. Yeah. But if we can't get if we can't get back to the last one, that's fine. But the you know Nate has this older sister Ellen. Yeah. And so I was showing these, this early strip to someone, and he looked at Ellen, and he said, who's the kid in the coonskin cap? Yeah. And I said, that's, not, that's her hair. <laughs> and I, you know, I could not draw well enough. I've always had trouble with hair. Hair is hard to draw. Yeah. And that was how poorly I drew. I, poor, I drew so, so poorly yeah. that someone would look at this drawing of Ellen and mistake her hair for a coonskin cap. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a long, long way to go. Wow. wow. Yeah, this is Nate and his, oh, his uh, and, yeah. and Gina, the girl that's yeah. just behind him, his, yeah. his tormentor. His tormentor, sure. Yeah. And this, so add more babes. This is, the, this is the only Big Nate book 
in existence for like the first uh, 18 or 19 years of my career. Yeah. I had one book, it didn't sell at all. And the strip was not, you know, it was sort of moderately successful, but not really. Yeah. And like every cartoonist I've ever met, I thought, like, God, if, if only I could find a way yeah. to get my strip in front of more people, especially kids. Yeah. How, but also, it's incredibly tough. It's one thing for four, five, six years to figure I'm going to stay at the same client list and, and all right. that. How for 18 years, you know, how do you maintain? you? Because you, you have to be very interdirected about I'm just true to what I'm creating. Yeah. Well, there are bills to be paid. Yes. You know, so yeah. you just, you have no choice. But I would oscillate back and forth. At times, I would really feel sorry for myself and yeah. think, you know, I know that this is better than, yeah. you know, How I, I, like, yeah. it should be in more papers. Yeah. And then I, on the other hand, I'd think, what am I complaining about? I'm making a living as a cartoonist, yeah. my childhood dream. Yeah. yeah. You know? And as a kid, I used to think, I would be happy if I could get a strip in, in my parents' hometown paper. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good enough for me. Yeah. So why am I complaining about not being in enough papers? And I'd go back and forth between those two. No, but to do, get to the joy to get to do it for a living. I would draw coonskin caps for the rest of my life yeah. if, if, <laughs> yes. that, if, if yeah. that would. Yeah. So this yeah. leads to how many people here know Jeff Kinney, creator of Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Not personally, but yeah. 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 So, so uh, there's a lesson, a moral in this, is, which is if you create anything and you get fan mail, always answer your fan mail. So can you talk about a young Jeff Kinney reaching out to you? Yeah, well, at the time he was, he was a very young Jeff Kinney. I think yeah. he was 19 or 20. He was here at the University of Maryland, I believe. Yeah, right? he yeah. Was, and he was doing a comic strip for the Diamondback. Yes. And he sent letters to several syndicated cartoonists sort of asking for their advice. And this was not his first letter to me, but his second. Yeah. And um, he wrote me, and I wrote him back, wow. and we sort of became pen pals. Yeah, yeah. Looks and like your mom dated it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and, I'm and, sure. And, and we, we maintained this letter writing correspondence for a, a couple of years, basically until he graduated from college, and he then went on with his life. Yeah. And we sort of lost touch, but he always um, uh, was incredibly um, gracious, yeah. you know, a, 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 in, in thanking me for whatever sort of, because he'd ask advice yeah. about trying to break in. At the time, he, you know, he'd, he wanted to be a syndicated cartoonist. That was with a still, comic still the dream. Yeah, yeah very yeah, much that so. That was the dream. Yeah. So yeah, and there, there he is. <laughs> there's Jeff. <laughs> a, 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 a happy looking guy. A very happy looking guy. And so, yeah. so years pass. Yeah. And, um, and I am looking at the Boston Globe, mm -hmm. a newspaper that I still subscribe to. And I saw a little thing down, you know, a little advertisement that said, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And, you know, about an author signing and reading at a bookstore in Boston. Yeah. And I, and I saw the artwork before I saw the name. Yeah, sure. I said, that looks like Jeff's stuff. <laughs> and then I saw his name, Jeff Kinney. Wow. And I said, he wrote a book. This yeah. is tremendous. Yeah. And at the time, this was before the Wimpy Kid. This it was his first book. Sure. And it was just starting to get traction. Yeah. So I tracked him down. I, and yeah. I said, Jeff, you know, congratulations. Yeah. We got back in touch, and, um, and he, long story short, he, he helped me. Yeah. He said he had all those years remained a Big Nate fan. Wow. And he said, um, you should have a book deal. Wow. Wow. And, and, and he was growing his at this point to a half billion dollar enterprise. He, in was, he was in the process of becoming the 500 pound gorilla yeah. of children's publishing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good guy to have on your side. It's, so answer that fan mail because you never know. Wait yeah. 18 years. and uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, ha I, I got my book deal to start writing children's chapter books, these books, yeah. uh, really because of Jeff Kinney. Yeah, and he really helped kind of re readers rediscover and reinvigorate that entire, I would call the hybrid novel, right? Where you have the prose and the pictures. Right. Yeah. You know, he, uh, he, he, he says that he was writing that first Wimpy Kid book for adults. Yeah. 
to look back on their childhood in sort of a nostalgic way. He didn't even realize at first he was writing like the perfect kid's book. Yeah, yeah. And of course, that line notebook paper, that's a, a motif that I had used in the early days of Big Nate. I so, was gonna say. So of course, when I got back in touch with him, I said, you'll hear from my lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, you'll hear from my accountants. <laughs> and you worked it out. Uh, right? But no, I mean, yeah, yeah he, he and a, a, another, uh, another author and cartoonist who, um, who is here today, Dave Pilkey. Sure, you know, Captain both, Underpants. Both those guys have, yeah. have really, I mean, really before those guys, if you went into a school library and asked for a, a book that had comics in it, yeah. you, the librarian would say, sorry. Yeah, you know? it's gonna be old peanuts. It's yeah. not, it's yeah. not gonna if be. If that, if, if that. that. Yeah, so uh, because you drew line paper all those years earlier and he, <laughs> exactly, and, and yeah. he creates this, and so suddenly now you have your own your own publishing uh, franchise. I do, yeah. So yeah. I did eight of these novels, mm -hmm. um, which are different for me from the strip because I, I I write the strip for everybody, yeah, for readers of all ages, yeah. So I had to sort of learn. I, I write the books for kids, yeah, you know, ages basically seven to twelve, yeah. or so, yeah. And so it's a different kind of writing, but I, I ended up, I didn't know if I'd like it or not, yeah. but I, I really liked it. So yeah. I did eight of them, and then yeah. I thought, eight is good. Eight is good. Eight yeah. is enough, as yeah. it were. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I don't know if, if anyone hasn't seen the books, this is, sort of, this is what they look like inside. Yeah. So um, I think some, sometimes I'm a little mystified sometimes when I go into bookstores and I see some of the books that are advertised as graphic novels. Yes. They're really not graphic no, novels. No. I'm not, I don't do graphic novels. Yeah, these are hybrid. These, these, yeah. these are, but they're not illustrated books either. No, no. They're, they're, so that's why the, I, I like the name hybrid for them because yeah. they combine the text and the comics. Yeah, and did you find yourself playing, you know, each creator who work does these hybrids seems to play with text and picture and how to, their own balance. And also, uh, some of them I know aim at like sixth grade boys and girls. They're trying to figure out what, what is their sweet spot. Did you kind of play with your own balance levels, if you will? Um, I just think, like I, I, I call myself a rhythm writer. So yeah. um, when I write, I just, I hear the dialogue in my head. I yeah. hear what the kids are saying. Yeah. And it just has, the rhythm has to be right. Yeah. And it just suggests to me like, well, this is, this I can just write in text, but this line, it's gotta be a speech bubble or mm. it's, you know, you gotta have a visual to go along with this. Yeah. So it just, it, it, I can't really define it any better than that, but yeah. I think a good rule of thumb with kids is, you know, show not tell. Yeah, yeah. And um, they love, it's like, if you're gonna, What's funnier for a kid, reading a, a description of someone getting hit in the face with a pie yeah. or seeing it happen? Yeah. Well, you opened with Pratt Falls and Fooms and, right? and all yeah. that, so you came yeah. back to it. Yeah. yeah. And so what about Sandy and the Surfriders? Well, I, I picked this because one of the joys of, of writing these chapter books for me was that I could be more ambitious with the artwork and, you know, more than I could with the strip. Yeah. And so I could never do a drawing like this in the comic strip, but in a book I could, and, and this is also the reason the books took a year to, to do, because these drawings take a long time and I don't draw all that fast. Yeah, but, uh, and let's just see, we're running out in there. Yeah, there so are. that those are compilations of yeah. the comic strip. That's a sketchbook page. Yeah. I love how you, I love how that looks. And Those are my tools of the trade. Yeah, I'm very low tech. Yeah, I don't I don't uh, do anything digitally. I'm just uh, just paper. Yeah, yeah. Sparky, same tools, right? Yeah, you don't have yeah. change. And that's my favorite knit review of all time. Yeah, yeah. Was that from? That's not from your editor. That's the, <laughs> that is that is from the son of a Harper Collins editor. Wow who wow. read, read the first Big Nate chapter book, and that was his review. Big Nate is wow. gonna blow your pants wow. off. Wow, 
That could have gone on the cover. That could have. Uh, yeah, yeah, we used it. Yeah, and then you get your own. Your, your own. Well, this is a creepy plush toy. Yeah. So uh, 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 you never know how people's big Nate fandom is going to manifest. Yeah. And I found this, and I've been, I've had nightmares about it ever since. I, I am now, I am now. He's alive. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is. He's he's frightening. I think it's the feet. I yeah. The oh feet. yeah. Always comes back. And, yeah. and, and in, the, in the Netherlands, what is Niek de Groot, right? Yeah, Niek de Groot. I, I am Groot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. from so different. So, a lot of different languages. Well, yeah. And you have the whole team here speaking of Dave Pilkey and, yes. and you and Jeff Kinney and Stefan Pastis. Yeah. So, you guys are all killing it on the, on the bookshelves and the bookstores. And, uh, yeah, that's from a fundraiser we did. And yeah. what a. What an honor and a privilege to hang out with those guys. And, and, and none uh, of them really draws a full head of hair. I know. <laughs> they, they all, I know. I mean, Cap he doesn't even try, Dave Pilkey with Captain Underpants, but it's, uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a common thread there. Yeah. Um, well, this is, you know, congratulations, because you are, you are just a, a tremendous storyteller. You, your characters come alive, not in a creepy way like that plush toy. Yeah. But please give a big hand to Lincoln. Woo! Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.